Alright, welcome back. We are the 136th Royal Canadian Henley. My name is Brent Duncan. And I'm Ali Zimmerman. We're happy to be your hosts uh, through the rest of this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, as we watch our Henley finals. Yeah, so uh, if you're you're just joining us, welcome. If you uh, kind of watched our, our test go through, we've already watched the final semifinal of the day, the under-17 women's quad. Uh, we just uh, had some technical difficulties, but the first final, event number one, the senior women's single has gone down, and unofficially, that was taken by Michelle Turax, uh, followed closely by Christina Wagner, um, who had a really, really tight battle with Rosa Kemp. But we are here at the start line for what is the event number two, men's senior lightweight double. Really, uh, unofficially, obviously, but our results from the senior women's single was Michelle Truax, who also won that event last year. So as uh, if anyone is not familiar with lightweight racing, all the athletes on your screen right now will have had to weigh in this morning at 72 and a half kilograms. Uh, it's about 160 pounds. Uh, they'll have had to do that this morning, and they'll have to do that every day that they race. So senior men's lightweight double, um, they'll have definitely come through heats, if not semis as well. So they've done that at least one other day this week, uh, possibly two. And likely you've got a couple of these athletes racing later on in the week as well. You can see there, they're adjusting, making sure the aligner has a straight line across uh, all seven bows, uh, sorry, six bows. And uh, you can see Calgary getting pushed out just a little bit. Calgary Rowing Club uh, in the closest lane to us, lane two. Undyne Barge, lane three. Hanlon lane four, Guelph in lane five, Seattle in lane six, and on the far side we have University of Western Ontario Boat Club in lane seven. This this should be a really good and exciting race, I think. Uh, got a lot of uh, pedigree and experience across all the crews. I can already see through some of the names here, we have four athletes who all compete for the same university, uh, the University of Western Ontario. There's the two boys in lane seven, Sam Pohl from Calgary in lane two, and Patty Gogan in lane four. All right, and they are off. So this should be a pretty exciting race. Typically, lightweight racing does uh, come down to the wire. So we'll see what we get out of this, the second final of the 136th Royal Canadian Henley. Nice tight start. Looks like everybody got off clean. No major issues. You can see both umpire boats following both, our, both sides of the course to make sure that nobody gets into trouble on the first couple of strokes. Looks to me like Calgary is really ripping their, their rate quite high. Um, but it does look like Guelph might have snaked their bow out already. Um, though it is difficult always to tell from the uh, not exactly 90 degree angle. Definitely. We know since these uh, athletes would have progressed from heats and semifinals that they are seeded. So the faster athletes with the fastest or the winning heats, winning uh, crews coming out of the semifinals are in the middle lane. So we can see Guelph there looks like they're just tapping it along. Their bow seat looking uh, very strong, very tall. Yeah, I've, I've got, uh, well, we've got that pole right there, but I've got uh, Guelph cooking down at about a 36. Um, looks like University of Western Ontario with Alex and Johnny. They're trying to hang on. I'm going to guess that's maybe about, about a stern length. Uh, Johnny and Alex about 37 as well. So they have the same right of striking, but yeah, it's about bow to stern and uh, UWO, they're sitting in second place right now. You got Spencer and uh, Thomas Markowicz, Spencer Keeler, Thomas Markowicz from Guelph. I know Spencer uh, rose to the University of Guelph. He raced at Canamax last year and Markowicz uh, raced for Saskatchewan at the Canada Summer Games last summer in the single, the double and the quad. So lots of experience between both of those guys. Uh, on the far end, we've got Alex Brandt and Johnny Blazovic. They both row for Western, as I mentioned. Johnny won the lightweight men's eight in 2016. Uh, he also won the lightweight straight four, the senior four, in 2014, 15, and 17. I don't know about that 2015 showing, but I can definitely speak to the, uh, the eight. I, I feel like you can speak to that too, Ali. Is that correct? Yeah, we are all part of the same <laughs> crew. <laughs> Um, but Alex, have, have you rode or coxed Alex before um, or coached him perhaps? I know Alex. Uh, he's a great guy. He's from Newfoundland. Uh, he was also in the Western Four that won the Senior Men's Straight Four last year. All right. 
Uh, it does look like Guelph is still keeping the lead, though, as we approach the halfway mark. Really good to see both those guys having such a strong showing. They are racing on a new kind of next-gen um, Team Canada opportunity to go to the Trans-Tasman Regatta in New Zealand in about two weeks. So they'll be preparing uh, a fairly high level uh, to go and compete halfway across the world. That's the, um, the Guelph double. Yes, both those boys. That is very exciting for them. So unofficially again, looks like Guelph coming through first with about a uh, full length, uh, or sorry, a full boat length ahead of University of Western Ontario. I personally think it's really exciting that we are sending um, that under 21 development team down to uh, the, I'm going to mess up what the, the name of that regatta is, but I'll just say the Southern Hemisphere. I think it, it is a really exciting um, opportunity to continue to develop kind of that sub under 23, but still very highly competitive athlete. For sure. I mean, we're watching the Royal Canadian Henley Regatta, which is really the pinnacle of racing uh, here in Canada. Um, but for lots of these athletes, there are other opportunities out there. I know there are athletes competing at the Fizu University Games presently in Shanghai, um, and some athletes still looking forward to their big regatta, the Trans-Tasman, in about two weeks' time. Really getting uh, exciting here. We're watching the last 500 meter, or from the 1500 meter pylon. These guys are still trying to manage, navigate the conditions a little bit. It's looking, you can see the trees in the background, quite blustery. Uh, they're dealing with a, a tailwind regatta. Their coaches hopefully would have done a little bit of maybe some uh, technical rigging. They might have changed the length of the blades uh, just to try and give these guys as much of an edge as possible over the conditions does look like Calgary Guelph sorry, has uh, dropped their rate a bit from before. Uh, it does make sense. It is about 1,000 meters later. Um, they're now striking at about a 35, and it seems to be working out for them as they have, I'd say, a boat or two of open over the next two crews that are fighting out for second place. For sure. You see uh, Patty Gogan and Andre Volvic from Hanlin, who are in lane four, battling it out with the University of Western Ontario. Really, it looks like we've got a full Ontario uh, trifecta between one two and three that is really exciting good to see that said it is canadian henley so only one crew only the top finishing crew is going to come home with medal um, and so far that does look to be guelph having led from basically the start Absolutely. These guys are, are certainly looking very polished. Uh, their sculling is looking, you can kind of see every once in a while their blades look like they just bounce off the water a little bit. So it's misleading from the cameras, but it is quite choppy out there and they are handling the conditions just fine. Yeah, they're, they're doing a really good job making sure they complete their stroke, step out at the release. Um, if they are on that under 21 team, I, I do know their, their coach, Greg Chipka, the Brock University Next Gen Hub Coach. Um, he's uh, a big believer in really completing the stroke. Uh, I believe he usually uses the phrase, hit your target. Um, that is, you know, coming through all the way to the body, making sure you know the position you're sitting in at the end of every single stroke. You can see here they're into the red buoys. They're well into the last 250 meters of the race as we pan through to the finish line. Uh, the guys from Western definitely not giving up. But even though uh, they're not giving in and there is a bit of a bounce, this does look to be Guelph in lane five, crossing the line unofficially, first place to uh, a pretty sizable lead. Absolutely, and we know this is the uh, the senior men's lightweight double, so these are some young guys beating up on uh, probably some older, older, more experienced athletes, but uh, that's a pretty sweet win for Spencer Keeler and Thomas Markowicz uh, from Guelph. Congratulations to those athletes, and good luck to them as they... Uh, travel and get some international racing under their belt in the future. I have no doubt we'll probably see both of those athletes racing again this week as well. Uh, that is, I, I bet we'll see most of these athletes again. And that does look like Calgary crossing the line. I think that's... Guelph with an unofficial time of 619.74. That's uh, 6.35 that seconds uh, over top of Hanlon Boat Club, uh, who are just two seconds over the University of Western Ontario for the top three. Again, that these are unofficial results, but that is that is a pretty speedy time, 619. That just goes to show not only are these favorable conditions, you can see now, I think on the cameras, it, it is starting to show that it is a little bumpy out there, a little choppy, as much as it is a tailwind um, and a tail current. Once that water starts to get disturbed, it, it can really start to throw you off. 